the whole house to you at night. I'm so sorry. Well, how old is Like, I'm, I'm not just... And you say this right now to me? <laughs> no, like... You mind your own business, Nakia. I blindly refuse. <laughs> this is great cinematic TV. This is what I like. The fact that it's messy, it's toxic, but it's not harming anyone is... Oh my god, it makes me laugh. And the fact that how many times does Trent need someone to tell him they don't want him in order for him to understand? Make it make sense. Georgia has always said she didn't like him. Yeah, she said she had funny flutters. Yeah, she said she liked this, that, and the other. But when it came to choosing, she's always chosen Nate. And the only reason I feel like she chose him was because of the truth bike. And still, that didn't work. So I don't get why he's feeling some type of way. And Nakia is always going to say what's on her mind. The fact that she said Zach will always speak what's on his mind and he needs to shut his big head and mouth. <laughs> oh my god. I digress. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We are over 900. Amazing. Let's keep going, guys. Click the like button. Turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos and definitely leave a comment. So normally I review my reviews in real time as in I watch a couple of scenes and then I'll sort of give my review on that and at the moment I am furious. I know someone said it was, I, was I, I couldn't read the reviews because I was busy at work last night and I didn't finish till very late so I think someone said I was protecting Georgia or something like that. I am upset with Georgia for breaking Nate's heart. Nate doesn't deserve this. Everybody knows that I'm a Nate fan. So the idea that she would say she's all in with him and then she would break up with him to go and try things with Trent doesn't make sense to me. And to see Nate sort of breaking down to Andy and sort of explaining what's happened is really sad because Andy and all the girls sitting there. So you have Nakia and you have uh, Tasia. They all know that Nate is a great guy and everybody can't understand how Georgia would pick Trent over Nate. That doesn't make sense. The math ain't mathing. The only reason I think she did it was to try it out like she did with the kisses, was to try it out to see if it worked because I really don't see anything between her and Trent. I Trent for me should have gone home ages ago, but the only reason I feel he's in the villa, as I've said before, is, is because he's Zach's sidekick. So Zach feeds off whatever Trent is doing. And, uh, you know, Zach, Zach needs someone to boost his ego and Trent is that for him. So, um, I'm really sad. I'm really sad for that because Nate didn't deserve this, but then at the moment, the problem is with Nate. If you don't pick him and you pick somebody else, then he moves on. And so f for me to think he would ever consider things with Tasia, I don't know. I don't know. But I hope Tasia, seeing the way Reed is moving, will make a decision. And if she decides to pursue Nate, I, I hope it's because she really likes him as a person, not just because she wants to stay in the villa. Anyway, you have Reed go and have a chat with Chloe. Reed is after anything that moves, anything that will save him and keep him in the villa. Because he's saying that there is a spark and it's like, uh, make it make sense. So is this the very first time you've had a spark with someone? You didn't have a spark with all the other girls you're coupled with. You're just coupled for convenience. That doesn't make sense to me. And for Chloe to think that she is the one who's going to change Reed. Good luck. Good luck to you. You're going to need it because I have a feeling if another bombshell comes in, he will turn his head. If he was disrespectful to Kira, disrespectful to Abby, disrespectful to Tasia, how do you think he's going to be respectful to you? The only thing that he gets away with is he's got a cute smile. And so people are sort of distracted by the smile and they don't see, you know, the villain things that he does. That's just my opinion. And it's sad, sad to see Tasia sort of having a conversation with Naki and sort of expressing how she feels the fact that you know reed she feels played her and we all know he did he wanted to stay in the villa so he pretended to really like her the same way he pretended to like abby the same way he pretended to like kira so that they could all save him and it's going to be interesting the day he has to pick to see who he actually picks because i don't think he's ever had to pick anyone so it would be interesting to see who he picks because he's going to have to pick someone and he's going to have to pick someone he likes and then everyone will know who is his type and what is what you know the truth is and for me i don't get georgia and trent even them sleeping out on the daybeds mm, okay
I'm really trying not to laugh. Anyway, so the islanders go to bed. You can see, you can see that Tyra is really smitten. She really likes Kale. And I hope Kale likes her as much as she likes him because we really haven't seen their relationship since they came in together as a couple. I don't know whether it's because they're not toxic or there's no drama going on with them. This is where we're not being shown their sort of connection. I don't know. Anyway, they're making out in bed. Nakia is in paradise with Andy. She's making out in bed. And Lucinda and Zach, uh, that's an everyday thing. And surprise, surprise, Georgia and Trent sleep outside. Personally, I'm trying not to, I don't want to be mean in my reviews, but personally, she made her bed. So she needs to lay in it. Because if she thought Trent's kisses were terrible, what made her think that making out with him in bed would be any better? Did she think that laying flat his kisses would be better? What did she think? Really? Seriously? Make it make sense? Anyway, in the morning, the commentator is like, oh, you know, I wonder what Piggy saw last night. Anyway, the four packs of condoms are still there. And it's like, that's very presumptuous of Trent, isn't it? The fact that he went there prepared, what did he think? That on the first night, she would be ready to jump his bones. I think Zach told him and Zach has been advising him on how to sort of navigate this relationship, which is a pity because he's sort of battling with Nate who's got quiet confidence. He doesn't need to brag. He doesn't need to push. He doesn't need to pull. He just sits there and is comfortable in his own skin. And it's up to you to sort of decide, do you want to be with Nate or not? And in the morning, poor Georgia has buyer's remorse because she's wondering what did I do? How did I end up in this bed? And Trent can see it because he went from being excited to suddenly realizing that, oh, she's really not feeling me. I think she didn't feel him from the moment she went to bed with him because when he was kissing her, she didn't seem as into it as she does with Nate. And so for her to say to him, it's the audacity for me. It's the audacity to say to the straight face for her to say to him, you know, there's something missing. It's totally different to, you know, when I'm with Nate. And it's like, why would she say that? Why would she say that? Why stab him? Why not just say to him, well, you know, can we take a step back? Can we just, you know, give me time to think? And then she goes aside and she, this is where immaturity shows because some of the things she's saying to Trent don't make sense and they're very hurtful but because to her she's trying to process what's happened I think this is why she's realizing that mm, this is not it and you can see Trent's balloon becoming deflated and deflated and deflated if he continues to pursue Georgia that says more about him than it says about Georgia because Georgia has de has denied him several times and he's continued to apply pressure and she keeps denying him she kissed him she told everybody the kiss was bad she went to bed with him she told him well Nate is better she at recoupling pick Nate. What else does he want? How much can one person take? This is my kind of TV. Somebody save me because these four minutes of TV are the best I've watched in the whole of the season of Love Island. Anyway, so Georgia wakes up and you could tell she had buyer's remorse from the moment she woke up because even when Trent was trying to kiss her, she was trying to distance herself until she put her head opposite to where his head was. And that should have been enough for him or for anyone to question what's going on here are you moving just because you're stretching or are you moving because you're trying to distance yourself away from me and the audacity for her to wake up and run straight and get straight into Nate's bed tells you everything you need to know tells you everything you need to know I said this yesterday and I'm going to say this Georgia really likes Nate but I think Georgia is worried about Nate's race and how her family and friends will accept that because every time she's tried to do anything with Trent she's always gone back running to Nate so for her to speak to Nate and tell him that you know I I was thinking of you all night I regret my decision I'm here with you 100% she went running to, to, to Nate to tell him everything and every time something has happened with Trent she's always gone jogging back to, 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 to Nate to let him know that way nobody else can tell him anything he knows before the messengers come so and she's always honest with whatever's happened and so the idea 
I would have expected her to say, can we go out for a chat? For her to dive into bed and to pull the duvets up, it's like, oh my God. And Nakia is me. Nakia is me with a ball of popcorn, just wanting to hear what's going on. And Nate had to tell her, Nakia, mind your own business. I think all the girls like Nate in the villa. I think he's one of the most comfortable guys, most relatable guys in the villa. And I think the girls really like him for that, that he's very protective, he's very caring. And so... I think they felt some type of way when Georgia went to sleep outside. That's because they they like Nate and there was nothing malicious about it. And so for Lucinda to then run back with it to Trent doesn't make sense, especially given the fact that Trent was telling his friend Seb that, oh, she, she's a bit behaving a bit strange this morning she says you know it feels different because she's used to waking up with Nate no say the truth tell him the truth of what you were told I said this and I'm going to say this Lucinda is bitter yes you might say I'm lying you might say I'm over exaggerating Lucinda really liked Nate she coupled up with Nate and then Zach came and told her lies about Nate and she recoupled with Zach and so for the idea that Nate then tried to explore things with Tia when he initially told Lucinda that he was all in for her is something she's never got over. And this is why where Nate's business is concerned, she has to be there. She has to be there tearing him down. She has to be there getting him in trouble. I don't see why she needed to be the CNN of the villa to run and tell Trent what happened, but that's just me. I've said this before. Can I start a campaign for Lucinda to go home, please? It's time for Lucinda to go home. She's already had her season. She doesn't need to be the toxic mess in the villa. She needs to know why she's there and sit down somewhere and allow people to do what they're going to do without her sort of being so messy. For her to run and report everything to Trent doesn't make sense to me, apart from the fact that she likes being watching Nate squirm or she wants Nate to squirm or she wants Nate to feel some type of way because she wanted him she couldn't have him so no one else in the villa can have him and so for Trent to say oh but she cuddled me the whole of last night mm, I don't remember seeing that but hey it could have happened under the duvet we didn't get to see as much I think if there was any action overnight we would have been shown if we were shown Zach and Lucinda you know overnight when they slept on the day bed we would have definitely been shown trent and georgia but hey it is what it is and for everybody now to make her out to be the villain everybody has a right to change their mind everybody has a right to change their mind it's up to the people that you're changing the mind for to make to agree or to disagree with you so so if she wants to switch between trent and nate that's her choice it's up to nate and trent to decide are they willing to participate and so I like the fact that Nate was honest and said, I'm not just going to jump back in. You know how I am. I am going to think about it because Zach is trying to sort of turn him off. I think Zach is trying to send her home for some reason because he's not happy that his guy couldn't steal her because they're the impression that I get is as long as someone steals a girl from Nate, Zach is happy for some reason. Trent is happy. And so the idea that they tried to steal Georgia and it didn't work out is not going to settle very well with them. And it's going to make Georgia's life in the villa very, very uncomfortable unless Nate steps up. And for Lucinda to be telling all the girls and to be running around as the CNN of the villa, as I said, telling anyone with ears to hear that this is what has happened. I don't get it. And then for her to do the typical English thing whereby you're gossiping about someone. As soon as they walk in, you put a smile on your face. Hello, darling. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. That was unacceptable. She needs to be called out for that. She needs to be called out because Lucinda is way older than a 21 year old. And I don't see why she would take joy in sort of terrorizing somebody else and making somebody else feel uncomfortable. It's time for Lucinda to go home. I'm sorry. It is time for Lucinda to go home. Oh, I feel sorry for Georgia. I know. I'm sorry. I know I should be holding her feet to the fire. But the fact that it seems like I'm defending Georgia, but for me personally, yes, Georgia has switched between Nate and Trent, but she's always been honest with, with Nate. She's always been kind with Nate. She hasn't been disrespectful like Tia. And this, I think, is why I give her a lot of room or I give her a lot of credit or I'm a bit more patient or lenient with her. Whereas with Tia, I had no patience at all. And to see Zach and Trent say that there's something wrong with her. Excuse me. Where were you 
you know, the judgment officers when Reed was ju- jumping from one girl to the other. Where were you? Why didn't you say there's something wrong with him for playing all the girls in the villa? But because it's Georgia, now it's a crime. Make it make sense. She doesn't feel your friend. Your friend has got no game. He's got, he doesn't know how to kiss. He doesn't know how to touch a woman. He doesn't know how to talk to a woman. Don't blame it on Georgia that, you know, he doesn't have the riz. He's not like Nate. Please sit down somewhere. And I like that Chloe tried to have a conversation with Georgia and sort of tried to sort of comfort her and let her know what's going on in the villa because I think she's overheard some of the conversations and she understands that Nate is not just going to say, okay, welcome back, let's go. And to see her cry in the shower was sad. I really feel for Georgia. I really do. And then to see, you know, how did Trent uh, serve? Serve? Sam is always going to say anything that will please Nate and Zach because I think they're the reasons why she's in the villa. So to see her sit with with Lucinda, Zach and Trent and Seb and try and be the judgment police, I do not like that. I do not like that. They're the last people to speak on anybody's character in the villa. They need to take several seats somewhere. And it was good that at least, uh, you know, um, Georgia was able to go and sit with Nakia, Tyra and Tasia because even when she was walking past the boys Kale and Nate tried to make her feel good because they said oh you look amazing and that sort of made her smile because you could see she really wanted to cry and Nakia Nakia is my girl the way (laughs) she was trying to sort of pacify Georgia because Georgia's really feeling feeling it today and she was telling her you know I've been through this and after all don't mind Zach and his big headed mouth (laughs) and it's like oh my god did you have to go there Nakia did you really have to go there so Tasia and Trent go for a chat and that's the strangest combination ever if there was one in the villa in the sense that Tasia seems very reasonable and very rational I don't get why she'd want to couple up with someone as silly as Trent unless she's doing that because there's nobody else she can couple up with in the villa because otherwise it does not make sense to me why she'd pick Trent really i think she'd be better off going after seb unless she doesn't want the competition with chloe because chloe seems to be keen on seb as well and that's another combination i don't understand i think they need to bring in more bombshells because reed and seb need to go home really they need to go home because i don't think they're it i don't think they have great chat i don't think they are romantic in any sense so the idea that you know, Chloe would be interested in either one of them. I think she would just because she needs someone to stay in the villa with. Otherwise, I don't think they make a great match. And I think, I think Abby, Sav and Lucinda are now the mean girls of the villa. In the sense that they're talking about Nakia and they're criticizing Nakia and, oh, she doesn't smile. And yet, you know, Andy is the goofiest guy ever. How do they get along? And it's like, that's none of your business, really. What has that got to do with your couple? Can somebody send Lucinda home, please, please? I love the fact that Tyra and Nakia have decided to t- adopt Georgia <laughs> and they're sitting there watching the guys work out. And it's the cutest thing ever. And it's sweet. It's nice because it sort of distracts Georgia and sort of takes her away from whatever's going on with Nate because she's threatening to leave the villa if Nate doesn't pick her. And it's like, well, you made your bed, love. You need to lay in it. And I don't know. I really don't know. The other thing is, I think Tej has gone for for Trent because Nate is gone because she knows that Nate is now involved in this situation with Georgia and she doesn't think that she has any chance of winning Nate over. She realizes obviously that Reed played her which is really sad but hey it is what it is. Am I the only one who's confused by the Lucinda and Sav friendship? How did that come about? Is it because Sav and Zach sort of agreed that they would be the villains in the villa when they said that we would carry gossip from one side to the other? And in so doing, Sav now has to sort of be buddy buddy with Zach's plus one. Make it make sense? Because they're having this conversation and it doesn't make sense to me. The fact that they're sort of questioning the connection between Seb and Sav. And we all know there's nothing romantic there. Seb chose Sav, in my opinion, because he was told that that's the only way he was guaranteed to stay in the villa. And sadly, it seems Seb is moving on and is trying to pursue Chloe, which means that Sav is now vulnerable because Andy 
is with Nakia and really hasn't paid Sav any attention. And it would be a surprise if he suddenly picked Sav at recoupling. Um, I don't know. And then to see Nate and sort of uh, Georgia staring at each other across the pool is hilarious. <laughs> Georgia, Georgia really wants Nate and she's going all in the fact that she told everyone that she felt like she was cheating when she was with Trent tells you that she really wants Nate and she really is going to do anything and everything within her power to win him she's already said you know she feels like she wants to die she feels like if you know Nate doesn't give her a chance she's going to go home and it's like oh okay I'm really trying not to gloat and I'm really trying not to laugh because you know, after this sort of flirting across the pool, Nate and Georgia go inside for a chat. And she really wants it to be known that she's not expecting Nate to fall at her feet. She knows she's going to have to graft him to win him back. And he, part of him is happy that, you know, she told him what he's wanted to hear. But at what expense is more or less where he's coming from that? Oh, how, oh, what did it take in order for you to feel that way? Um, and maybe it's immaturity. Maybe she needed it right in front of her face to realize that, nah, I really don't want this. And Nate is going to do the honorable thing. So he told her, you need to have a conversation with Trent. And Trent walked in. And because I think Trent walked in because he wanted to see what was happening because he saw them go to the bedroom. So he wanted to know what was happening in the bedroom. And then he said, oh, I'm going to go and change my pants. So for Nate to say, I want the two of you to talk and the way the way georgia talked to you was very dismissive oh well you know last night you know we tried it, it didn't work so can we just be friends and it's like <laughs> you're groveling with nate and you're very dismissive with trent make it make sense make it make sense i like the way she handled it but at the same time i'm like oh please and for Trent to say, well, I am no longer interested in you as well. Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if she had if she had come back to you and said, oh, well, I changed my mind about Nate. I want you back. You would have taken her back because I don't know how many times you wanted her to tell you she didn't like you in order for you to agree that, okay, fine, I will move on. And his ego is bruised. If he hated Nate before, now he hates Nate with a passion because Nate said, I back myself. I don't need to fight for anyone. I don't need to, you know, degrade anyone. And in backing himself, Georgia went out and she came back to him. And, you know, he is that guy. He is that guy. No wonder why Tyra and uh, Nakia were saying, yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm a bit curious as to why, you know, when the Islanders had their drinks, Trent decided to give a toast now, three, four weeks later, what is it? Was he saying his goodbyes then? Was he told by the producers that he will be going home? Or did he ask to be sent home? Make it make sense because obviously Georgia doesn't want him. Um, He wasn't able to pull her irregardless of whatever tricks he and his, and his boss were coming up with. And so does that mean that he's, you know, saying goodbye to all the islanders make it make sense i don't know um i see georgia and nate cuddling i think they're now in a happy place and for lucinda to be asking abby who are you going after and lucinda's become the villa mean girl in my opinion she and and sav are the villa mean girls because they are there to criticize and and you know berate other islanders for what reason only the two of them know only the two of them know i think she shouldn't have come to love island australia i think she should have kept whatever credits she got from being on the uk version and left it at that because i don't think she's doing her image any favors by being on love island australia except that she's coming across as a villain that's my opinion so she receives a toast to say, you know, all the islanders come to the fire pit. And there is concern because obviously Sav, uh, Tasia and Abby are the single girls and they don't know who they're going to go after. Abby was saying, you know, she really likes Seb. And it's like, well, you're too late in the sense that when he tried to speak to you, you were busy talking about liking land and land and land because you thought you were secure with Reed. Now Reed has shown you who he is and it's too late for you to try and chase after Seb because he's already been turned off. So the islanders receive a text message to gather around the fire pit and Sophie arrives. And so because Chloe is the latest bombshell, she gets to pick who she wants to couple up with. And for me, for me, for me, hmm, hmm, 
Okay, it is what it is. I think she thinks she made the right choice. I don't think so. I think yeah, Seb is a bit boring, so maybe she wanted Reed. Reed went the extra mile. He tried to make her laugh. He tried to be, you know, very goofy because she said she liked that about him and he tried to be very attentive, which is his speciality. So I'm not surprised that he won her. Tasia has learned her lesson. She should have maybe stuck with someone like Nate, but she messed about and now she's found out because it's too late and she's actually said everybody warned her, but she needed to find out herself and here she is am i the only one who's confused who's the super fans has anyone found out who the super fans are because sophie reveals that they've had you know the super fans vote and decide who their top three are and who the bottom you know islanders are and it's like well even if reed was at the bottom he was able to save himself because he was able to sort of win the bombshell and so I was happy. I was happy. I think the top three make sense because they have been the, the most genuine, in my opinion, Kale, Andy, and Nate. Yay! <laughs> because they've, they've really tried to be on their best behavior. You would be proud of how they've carried themselves. And sadly, Seb is tarnished with the same brush because of who his friends are and because his friends are Trent and Zach. I'm not surprised that they are in the bottom, really. I'm not. I don't know who would be. I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. You can see that the producers are manipulating who stays and who goes. And it's so evident in the sense that, okay, there's more girls than guys. Okay, we get that. We get it. But for them to say, okay, so the safe girls are Nakia, Tyra, Tasia, and Lucinda. So for Lucinda to suddenly be in the top three, doesn't make sense unless they want to save Zach. Lucinda didn't need to be in the top three. And the moment they were told they were going to decide which guy to save, she started with the waterworks. Oh, am I seeing something that nobody else is seeing? So obviously the girls are going to empathize with her. How many times can they save Zach? Please, how many times can they save Zach? Because last time there was an, uh, an elimination, they had to save Zach and Lucinda. This time again, they're having to save Zach. No, somebody else deserves a chance. Serb deserves a chance. Zach or Trent can go home. They've had their opportunity. It hasn't worked well. Whoop to do. It is what it is. The guys, I think, you can actually tell that they've been told you need to save Sav and decide whoever you want to send between Georgia and um, Abby. And they can't send Georgia because Georgia's now in a couple with Nate. So obviously it's most likely going to be Abby. I don't like how they're manipulating things and how obvious it is. So the girls decide to send home Seb. And am, am, am I surprised? No, because he was taking Trent's attention away from Zach. And maybe Zach must have said, you know, he wasn't happy with him being there. And that's why he was sent home. Because it doesn't make sense why Reed is still there and why they're busy calling him the bomb diffuser. And he's not doing anything apart from suck up to the girls when they walk in. And then once he's chosen, he steps back. That didn't make sense to me. Not at all. So the boys choose to send home Abby. Am I surprised? No. Obviously, it was always going to be between Sav and Abby. And because Sav is the villain and she says, you know, some of the crassest things that you, you wouldn't want your loved one to say on TV, but make for good TV at the same time. So the producers were always going to save her. And looking at who sent home tells me that. I remember on this truth bike where Zach was asked, would you send three Islanders home so that you could keep, you know, Trent here? And he said, yes. Shows me that Zach... The producers like him and they're going to keep his people around him to make him happy because there's no reason why Trent is still in the villa when he hasn't found a partner in all this time. Make that make sense? It doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, It's a pity that Abby and Seb got to go home and surprisingly, we got to see the funny side of Abby. And it's like, we've always seen her whining and crying and we haven't seen this bubbly and funny side of her. Make it make sense. Um... I don't know. It's sad that they're going home, but sadly, I think had she not shut things off with Seb at the start Abbey, I think she would have been safe. But because she shut things off, she had no choice but to go home. And sadly for Seb, he came in when you know, Trent has made himself Zach's minion. And because the producers need Zach in the villa, they were going to keep his minion around. And for Zach to say, I'm surprised that I'm in the bottom. What do you think, Sherlock Holmes? With the crass comments that you make, with the way you talk about the girls, the way you talk to the girls, the way you talk to the girl that you're coupled with, who do you think would want to save you? Make that make sense? Make that make sense? But anyway, I digress. 
I'm happy that, you know, Georgia and Nate are back together. Hopefully her eyes don't wander off again. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 17. Bye guys.